Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and in this tutorial what I want to do is cover how to set up a master material that allows you to have instancing and everything with some uh, parameters where you can actually turn on and off your textures. This can be really nice if you are setting up a larger master material for everything. Uh, you can kind of set it up with these on off controls and it just gives you a lot more control overall uh, whether or not you're going to be adding those individual uh, actual like texture maps and this is kind of the end result that we will be getting so what I want to do is actually start from scratch so starting down here in my actual content browser I'm going to create a material real quick and I'm just going to name it um, let's say a base material and I'm going to open it up. So now we're here in our material editor. Can kind of expand this a little bit. That way we can yeah, see it fuller screen. And I'm going to start pretty simple. So uh, I'm going to, just for the purpose of this at least, start with a metal that I want to set up. So I'm going to bring in my different metal uh, actual textures themselves. And one of the reasons behind actually having some of these like switches and stuff is because sometimes you have textures that do have certain maps sometimes you have them that don't I think metal is a good example mainly because uh, you actually have a lot of times you know your metallic map that's being used um, for your metals of course that aren't ever used for any other uh, actual textures so um, yeah basically just really quick of course kind of plugging it in like we would uh, you know with our normal just simple texture and um, this is my roughness here so plugging in the different values and so what we should start with is I mainly want to get things you know in their uh, place um, ready to go we have a metal it's looking all right over here and I can just real quick just close out of that and I'll throw in a sphere right here into our scene and apply our base material to it so um, that way we kind of see it but yeah the goal is uh, to be able to you know if I actually right click here create a material instance and let's call this our metal uh, A and then I'm also going to create a, another material instance so let's do this one here I'm going to name this one concrete uh, a so I also have a concrete that I want to make and we'll kind of use it for that now if I open this instance right now um, and of course instancing you know it's using the uh, initial uh, material that we actually have and it's making an instance based off of that and so it has all of the uh, like attributes and everything that the parent material has that we have here um, but what we want is to kind of basically be able to expose some of those parameters and um, how we do that of course is actually converting a lot of the stuff to parameters uh, that way we have more of that control so right now I can't control any of this really um, you know we can see our parent there but not much else there's some uh, different settings in here but not yeah what we want it to be at all uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open back up our actual um, main like parent material that we have going on and I can start by just you know uh, right clicking these texture samples and I'm gonna convert that to parameter and I'm gonna name this one the base color and then I can right click this one and name this one the metallic so metallic and then of course yeah keep on doing the same so this is our roughness uh, and then normal and so one thing I do want to add is actually the map um, it's kind of a very yeah uh, I think simple thing but I can go over here and just adjust the mainly because these are this isn't just the roughness value this is the um, roughness map or the metallic map um, so I want to be a little bit more descript with that just for uh, clarity sake um, base color or diffuse um, then we're gonna write map so there we go hit apply um, and so these are right now the default values that we have um, set up so now if I go back over to this concrete 
you can see that, yeah, I have the base color map, metallic map, normal map, roughness map. Cool. Um, so I can click on this if I want to and change it over and I can find my concrete base color, which is pretty cool. I can do it with the same with metallic, but the problem is my concrete doesn't have a metallic. So that's going to be one of the things we're going to resolve. I can go here and type in the concrete and find my normal. And then I'm going to also do concrete and then find my roughness. So um, there we go. We have concrete, of course, it's still getting a metallic value because we can't control that, you know? So we need to um, be able to have some more control like that. Um, do also want to go ahead and, although we don't have it for this material, um, we also need to have a immune occlusion um, as a possibility. So I'm gonna plug that in and yeah, that's gonna be our immune occlusion for now. But of course it's a normal map and I need to write this and say ambient or let's say maybe just AO map. So hit apply and there we have going in there. So you, now you can see that we can go back over here and every time I'm updating that kind of stuff, it's updating over here. So now I can actually go into the AO map at least for this one and just find my concrete ambient occlusion. Um, but one thing is, is going to be messing with my, you know, my actual metal that we kind of have. So, um, yeah, we'll have to kind of adjust that a little bit, but yeah, going back here, this is starting to be a base, which is going to, um, uh, pretty nice. Um, but I want to go ahead and start to set up some of these switches and, um, kind of some methods at least of like what I like to do to have a lot of control with my materials, of course. Um, so I am going to drag this out and I'm going to look for a switch. So uh, there's a couple of different switches and everything that we can use. Um, I want to use a static switch parameter so I can pull this out and um, we can see that it has a couple of different input locations as the true, the false, and then the default value. Um, it says parameter up here for the name and then switch parameter uh, and then parentheses false. So um, by default, I believe it is set to false. Um, so this is gonna be our default value. And then true um, is going to be, uh, yeah, like if we were to switch it basically. So what I wanna do is let's say that we have um, our map and let's name this parameter over to uh, something like um, has map question, or let's say has uh, base color or yeah, has map for now question mark and my spelling real quick and yeah by faults it's going to be a value um, so since this is our base color maybe I'll just set a default value of gray or something um, just for yeah simple and I'm gonna plug that into the faults then plug this in so there we go and you switch this over to a gray so hit apply there so now what you can see is when we come over here uh, we can see the global static switch parameter values um, right now it says has map and uh, by default it's just using the gray because we're saying no it does not have a map but i can turn this on and then switch this on and then you can see that as i switch this on it is enabling the base color map location. So we are saying true, there is a base color map. And so it's enabling that location there. You can now add in our concrete base color. And while we're on the topic of technology helping you out, I want to mention how important it is to keep safe and up to date with online risks and your personal security. For me, I feel like it is every week where I hear from a friend or relative that has been impacted by the personal information being stolen. Data brokers sell that information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, relatives, it's all out there on the internet. 
That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T revealed that over 73 million customer records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, thankfully, Aura does all this for me, and best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just because a company couldn't keep my data secure. If my info was compromised in the AT&T data breach, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I value my privacy and I also value yours. You can go to aura.com forward slash Peyton Varney, which is also linked below in the description to start your two week free trial and see how Aura could start saving you today. And back to our parameter shader that we've been working on. This is really useful because yeah, you can have things that don't have maps, also have things that maps and it's all kind of using um, you know, that base material that you set up one time. You don't have to make a new material every single time. Um, so for the purpose of this, you know, we have this setup. I'm going to probably name this a little bit further, uh, like, um, base color map question mark. And there we go. I'm going to duplicate these a couple more times. And so again, like, you know, once you set up one of these, uh, then you're going to be able to use the instancing for a lot of it. So this one might take a little bit more time, but it saves you a lot of time down the road, um, just being able to create new materials and, uh, yeah, be pretty nice. So, um, we're going to switch this one to metallic map question mark. And then this one's going to be our roughness map. normal map and then one more for AO map AO map there we go and we're gonna leave them all to be the same so uh, what I mean by that is all of their default values are going to be false um, by default and so you'll just have to turn them on for that spirit specific, uh, you know, um, math that you actually want to be bringing in. Um, now they do all need, uh, like true false, uh, like inputs, even, you know, if you're basically, you just need to, um, kind of give it an update. So with the metallic map, I can do a, um, just simple constant like this. And let's say by default, you know, we always want probably no metallic. So we're going to leave a value of zero. Um, and then basically, yeah, if you have a metallic map, you can bring it in. Um, and we could expand it further if we wanted some control out of it, like, um, you know, and actually just wanting to do it in here. Or we could also convert this to parameter and let's say metallic value. So go and this is our roughness so I'm going to convert to parameter roughness value there we go and then the normal map of course uh, it is reading uh, the red green and blue channel uh, instead of just the black and white so um, it might be useful to do something like this instead, um, where we actually just go in here and set a value of one in the blue. Um, and there we go. So now by default, yeah, there's nothing in that. If you want to just add normal information, you can turn it on. Um, because as you can see here, a lot with the normal maps, um, it has red, green, and blue information in uh, all of them, but uh, technically a lot of the detail and everything is in the, uh, it's all in the red and green channel. And so the blue channel is just the base. 
um, and so if you are just to set it to a solid blue nothing else um, then you are getting the absence of a normal map almost um, or just a, a flat normal map basically then with the AO map um, we can either set a color or so um, probably what would make most sense uh, with AO is a value of one which would be solid white so uh, there we go and yeah I don't think I'll ever need a value for this um, right there so cool normal map roughness map yeah so only these would be ones that we actually change by hand um, and everything else looks pretty good so we go back over here, you know, we're going to have some things a little bit broken. Um, so what I can do right now, I just have the base color. Um, I do also have an AO map for this, so I can turn that on. I do not have a metallic map. I do have a normal map, which is something I want to bring in. And then I do have a roughness map. So there, we are back to what we had before, which is pretty nice. Um, and now, yeah, I can make a different material, you know, so um, kind of going back to that metal that we made a second ago. Right now, it's set up like this, um, and of course, it's referencing the same parent base material that we have. I can come in here. If I want to set my own metallic value, I can, but I can also say, yes, I do have a base, a metal, a normal, and a roughness. I'm going to turn on all of these. So there we go, and already starting to get a little bit of a metal, which is pretty nice. Um, by default, thankfully, our metal map is our default. I'm going to turn these on just in case, you know, something switches up later on. It would change it all in this material, and so I want to make sure that, yeah, just the metal is set for this one. So um, works pretty well, and now, you know, uh, we have two different materials with a lot of control and everything so far with this, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, there we go. And one thing I did also want to real quick mention um, besides this is the uh, ability to actually set up groups. So um, over here on the left side and the uh, controls and everything for the, uh, the materials, if I click on this, um, there's currently no groups, um, but let's say these, we want to name all of these maps. Um, so I go down here, I can do maps, and now you'll see that once I made one, um, it's going to show up uh, for a drop down so I can come through and add it all to the same group and so making your own groups can be really great because it helps with organization as well um, so these are all going to be underneath the map group uh, so what that means is once I hit apply I can jump back over here and now you're going to see in the parameter groups um, tab and everything we have maps and it is specifically the, uh, the the maps that we have set up. So I can basically uh, set up different groupings if I want specific things um, to where I keep it a little bit more organized over here and it's not mixed up. Um, so I think another good one is this one I could also potentially add to a group. Maybe I named this one um, like something like uh, on off switches and I can come down here and of course add these all to that on off switch as well and then one more hit apply and now you can see that I have my on off switches my maps and then my uh, undefined ones up top uh, so it's a lot of nice kind of customization and stuff with that being able to uh, really start to build out your parameters and everything for when you do instance from like a parent like main material uh, and you want to kind of break it apart into some of these uh, like yeah just a bit 
basically be able to use one material and um, constantly being able to just add on you know new materials and not have to go through this process again of building stuff out into the actual graph so one last thing i wanted to show real quick is of course if we wanted to add a texture coordinate to it just for the uh, actual control of you know some of our um, tiling and everything i can just take this texture coordinate node and multiply it so i'm gonna press m on my keyboard there we go and then i'm going to um, press one and make uh, a one constant real quick here and then i'm going to plug this in this multiply into my uv section of all of my uh, maps um, and so this is going to allow me to be able to control the tiling for all of these and i just want to make sure that it's plugged into all the maps that way they're consistent and the same and then uh, by default, I can just set this to a value of one and convert to parameter. Let's say uh, our map uh, tiling. There we go. And hit apply. So now if I jump back over here to either of our materials, uh, you'll see that we now have a map tiling uh, function so i can expose that and now um, control my tiling which is pretty awesome um, so yeah again you know i can now really have a lot of control and um, just uh, freedom at least uh, and also yeah saving a lot of time with how i've set up all of these maps and everything uh, in here and it just really helps keep things not only organized but helps you in the long run of um, being efficient and uh, just having a, a really solid setup for working together with your uh, environment and all. So yeah, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, of course, uh, feel free to drop them below in the comments. I uh, hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.